Justin, how would you uh, – what kind of grade would you give that spin move on the scramble for the touchdown? Uh, it, was, it was probably a B, you know. I wish I could have kept my feet up a little bit or, or stayed on my feet, but I'm just glad I scored. So, but I probably have to give it a B, B plus you, maybe. Sorry, Candace, if I could follow up on that. When you decide to scramble, what's sort of the decision-making process as you go through it? How do you know when the time is right? Um, I mean, there's a lot of scenarios where, you know, I look to scramble. Um, one, maybe being if I see open green grass and it's third down and, you know, we, we need the first down. You know, that's one scenario where I might choose to scramble and, a, and another is when, when nobody's open. And uh, I think I can get some, some extra yards rather than throwing the ball away. Uh, I might as well make it like second to six, second to five rather than second to ten. So I think it's, you know, different for a lot of situations in the game. Thanks, man. Yeah. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz. Hi, Justin. Uh, I know you had committed to Penn State back in high school, and I'm sure the idea of playing in front of that crowd was one of the reasons that it was so enticing. What are your thoughts on going to Penn State for the first time and, and not even not having the wide out, not even having any fans? Is that diminishing the experience, or, or are you kind of like glad that you're not going to have to endure that? Um. No, not really. I mean, I wasn't really going there for the experience. Uh, my plan on is, is going there to win, to, to beat Penn State. So uh, whether that's with fans or with, without fans, you know, we, we, we have a job. And, you know, I, I think our number one goal is to go out there and uh, beat Penn State. Next up, Dave Biddle. Thank you. Justin, you had 15 carries. I know, you know, three of those include sacks, but uh, – you know, a lot of people think maybe uh, that's too many carries for you. Where do you come down on that? Do you feel like that's too many carries for you, or do you feel like 15 is about right for you? Um, uh, I don't really have a set number on what's right or not. I feel like it varies from, you know, game to game, you know, what situation I'm, I'm put in in the game. So I, I think it, you know, uh, differentiates but between each game. Thank you. Up next, Stephen Means. Hey, Justin. Uh, I think there was a play in, in the goal line situation where Garrett and Jeremy were kind of stacked on each other. And it looked like Garrett was open in the back of the end zone. And he was trying to wave at you to let you know he was there, but you took off. And he said that one of the reasons why is because you said you saw green grass. And so you thought it was a better decision just to take off and run for it. When you do scramble, um, how much of a conversation is it with your wide receivers afterward? And, you know, usually what are some of those explanations for why maybe if even if they thought they were open, you decided that, it wasn't a good look for you to throw the ball. Yeah, so actually, I remember uh, the exact play you were talking about. And, um, yeah, so that was a, a you know, a, a, a play-action pass where I think it was third and five or, 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 or third and six. And Gary was wide open in, in the end zone. But like I said before, I mean, I just saw green grass. And, you know, uh, I think the biggest part or a, a big part in playing quarterback is making decisions and not second-guessing yourself. So I, I made that decision to tuck the ball down and, and run to it to go and get the first down, and I mean, it worked out. But I mean, I think there will be situations like that where I do have to keep my eyes down field longer, you know, to, to see guys open up. So, you know, I think that that'll come with time, but uh, yeah. Just one quick follow-up. Is Dave like asking you, is he as on you about throwing the ball away as much as he was last year? No, uh, I, I think he has a lot of more confidence in me. And, you know, I, I, of course last year was my first year starting. So of, of course he was, he was on me a lot. But um, you know, I, there were there were multiple times where I should have just thrown the ball away, ball away last game. But uh, I think Coach Day has that you know certain confidence in me, and he trusts me more than last year. So I think he uh, just you know you know trusts me to make the right decision. Thanks. Up next, Dan Hope. Hey, Justin. Coach Day's talked a lot about the expectations that are on you guys, and I know you have high expectations for yourself. Just how do you manage those to make sure you don't get caught up in trying to live up to the high expectations? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, being, being at Ohio State, you know, we expect to win every game. So, uh, but managing those expectations, I think you just have to take it one game at a time, one week at a time. You can't really look into the future. And, um, yeah, so that, that's what we try to do. Coach Days is just honest, you know, about taking one game at a time. And our complete focus is, is on Penn State. It's, it's not – about last week, what, what happened versus Nebraska, it, 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 it's all on Penn State right now. So I think that's kind of, you know, how we keep our focus on one game. And that's, you know, what 
I guess the recipe to success is, you know, just, 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 just focusing on one thing at a time. Is it hard at all not to look ahead to, you know, the possibilities that could happen later in the year? Uh, I don't think it's hard because, you know, if, you know, you, you mess up this week, that opportunity never comes. I mean, uh, the past years, Ohio State's lost that one game to Purdue. And, you know, if, if they didn't uh, lose that game, they most likely would have been in the college football playoffs. So I, I don't think, you know, it's hard to look into the future, you know. Um, I think, you know, just, just focusing on the present and focusing on uh, each game week by week, I think that's the best way to go by, you know, winning and getting to the place we, we want to be. Because if we know that we focus um, one, one game at a time, we know that at the end of the season, we'll be right where we want to be. Thanks, Justin. Yep. Up next, Tony Gertman. Justin, we talked to Josh Myers yesterday, and he said that um, when you do run, they're going to make sure the offensive line is going to make sure to pick you up before there's anything funny happening in the pile. I'm wondering how often that happened this year or happened last year. Like, how often does that happen to you where maybe somebody tries to uh, twist an ankle or grab you somewhere? Like, how, how much of a concern is that for you? How often does it happen? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely happened – um, a little bit last game in terms of, you know, I just getting tackled and guys trying to twist my ankle or what whatnot. But um, I would say it, it, it happens more so when we play, I guess, the – I don't want to say worse your teams, but like the teams that, you know, I guess don't have that good of a chance in, in winning. They just try to do whatever, to be honest with you. And I, and I think it, you know, when we play um, teams that are, you know, just, just more well-coached and – you know, better teams, I, I think it tends to happen less. And I think that, you know, might come with respect, but I don't really know. I've, I've never really seen the point into, you know, twisting another guy's ankle or trying to, you know, hurt him after the play's over. I, I just don't see the point in that, but yeah. Thanks. Next up, Tim May. Thank you very much. Hey, Justin, uh, saw you and Josh Myers having some conversations coming off the field a few times and stuff. And just what are some of uh, maybe the communication uh, uh, situations y'all maybe are getting straightened out this week in terms of like, you know, blitzes, uh, stunts and things like that. And, and, uh, and what are you what are you responsible for there? And what are Josh and the linemen responsible for there in, in those kind of situations? Um. Yeah, so me and Josh's communication is basically just, just making sure we're on the same page. I think that's why we uh, talk and communicate off of the field. But uh, basically his job is to, you know, set the ID. And, of course, my, my uh, I guess, role is to trump anything I see. So if I see some sort of rotation or, or, or if I see, you know, maybe a look that they've given the week before or, or maybe last year, and, and I think a certain bliss is coming, I'm able to, you know, move the protection to somewhere else or, or, or do that. So, yeah. um, of course, the quarterback trumps, you know, what, what the O-line says because I can see, you know, uh, I guess more of the field and kind of the whole field, you know, because they're in that three-point stance. But uh, that, that, that's kind of our roles when it comes to, you know, protections. And, and stuff how, like how, important is it, how important is it this week against Penn State, which does bring a few every now and then? Huh? How important is that that this week against Penn State, which does bring a few every now and then, if you know what I'm saying, blitzes, et cetera? Um, I, I think it's important. I mean, I think it's the most important thing. Of, of course, I, I want to take um, as less hits as possible. So I, I think it's important <laughs> every week, to be honest with you. I, I don't think it's, you know, less important or more important than, than it was last week. It's, you know, just, just has a, uh, you know, just, just it's, it's really one of our top priorities. Thanks, man. Yep. Up next, Patrick Murphy. Justin, Justin no. you were after the game about Jackson's catch, and I know you said you didn't see it because you took a hit, um, but I assume you've seen it by now. Just your reaction to, to him getting in bounds and, and what he adds to this offense now that you guys have had a, a month or so to really work in, in pads and everything. I mean, it's not really surprising to see, uh, you know, that catch he made. I mean, he does it all the time in practice. So, you know, I, I think when the whole team saw it, we, we weren't surprised by, you know, 
his uh, ability to do that because, I mean, he's shown it multiple times in practice. But, you know, Jackson's a, a great receiver with great speed, great hands, and, you know, he runs great routes. So, you know, he, he definitely brings a, another talented receiver to our already talented receiving core. And um, I'm just, just excited to, you know, be able to get the, to throw the ball to him. And Garrett said yesterday that we haven't seen Julian at top speed yet, but a guy his size, his speed is surprising. What what have you seen from him, and what can he bring as well? I mean, the same thing, you know, just just great all around receiver. He's a big body, of course. You know, he runs great routes. He's definitely fast. You know, he has great hands. So just just a, just another great receiver. You know, I think Coach Hart does a great job with developing those guys, and you know, making sure they're ready for the game. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. Up next, Spencer Holbrook. Justin, when we talked to you uh, before the season started, you, you talked about having a conversation with Coach Day about not, you know, overcoaching or overthinking uh, just because of the long layoff. You had a lot of time to, to draw some things up. How do you think that went? And did, did the game – I mean, you obviously started for an entire year, but did the game slow down for you as it went on in that aspect, not overthinking and things like that? Yeah, the game definitely uh, kind of looks slower. Like, the defense looks slower moving. And – I just think that comes with, you know, studying film and, you know, being with Coach Day so much and, and kind of getting that, you know, I guess that different perspective on the defense and kind of seeing what he's thinking when he's calling certain uh, plays. So I think, you know, just as, as much time as I spend with him is, 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 is good for me and it, it definitely helps me out uh, and it, it, it definitely helps me uh, to be a better quarterback. Up next, Joey Kaufman. Hey, Justin, you mentioned earlier about scrambling that when you see an opening or, or green grass that you'll take it and scramble. Um, and it kind of goes off what the defense gives you. But do you have – when you when you think of games or if you were to draw your ideal scenario, is there is – there, how much would you want to ideally scramble? How much do you want to throw? Do you ever think about it kind of in, in those ways? No. I never really think about it like in terms of numbers. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever, uh, you know, to, to help the team win, whether that's not scrambling at all, whether that's scrambling every play, it, it, it doesn't really matter to me. How did you feel uh, Sunday at running 15 times and taking some sacks being your first game in 10 months? I mean, of course I was sore. I mean, that was my first time getting hit in, in 10 months, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm recovering uh, more and more each and every day. So, I should be uh, fully recovered by Saturday. Up next, Colin Hassel. Hey, Justin, I just want to ask you know, specifically about the quarterback sneak since you uh, did it twice <clears throat> on Saturday. What, what, it, what sort of goes into a quarterback sneak in your mind, and, and why, is, why was that something that was so successful for you this weekend? Um, well, of, of course, I think it starts up front. You know, we have a great – O-lineman, we have a great center, Josh Myers, great guards, Wyatt Davis and uh, Harry Miller. So, I mean, and then I also think it, you know, again, the amount of trust Coach Day has with me and, you know, putting me in those certain situations. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's more of a question for, for Coach Day on what goes into that play calling, you know, because he's, he's a coach. But um, I just get to play and, you know, execute it to the best of my ability. What, what what for you though as a quarterback makes like like how do you how do you make that play successful as a quarterback? Is there anything other than just you know being tough and and, and running as hard as you can, right? I feel like you know uh, a quarterback sneak. You 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 can't really like describe like how to make it successful. Like I, I feel like I've always just had a feeling for you know finding a you know uh, maybe an open gap or something like that. But I, I don't think there's a you know a set you know just just example or description where you can describe how to be successful on a QB scene. Appreciate I feel it. like I've always just, you know, just, just done it naturally, to be honest with you. And last one, Pete Thamel. Hey, hey Justin, uh, I want to ask you something kind of from, from the big picture. You show up at Ohio State about a year and a half ago, and – you have to adjust to teammates, learn them, and lead at the same time. And that has to be a, a, an interesting adjustment to, to both arrive and lead. And I'm wondering just now that you, you've been in the program for a year, you had a whole off season with everybody, just how much more comfortable you are being a, an alpha in the, uh, in the program? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm way more comfortable, you know, just 
Um, I think that time um, that I've spent with guys in the off season, you know, the things that we have to go through through the off season, I think that just made us, you know, a lot closer. And us not being able to, you know, have, you know, those relationships were kind of outside of the facility because of the pandemic and stuff going on. I think that's just kind of made us more of a family, even though we were already close, you know, as it was. So I think all of those intangibles and all of the stuff that has happened to us in the past that have just made us closer. And I mean, you know, just that and seeing that, you know, that our guys are looking for that leader. I, I think, you know, uh, I, I stepped in at the perfect time and um, you know, I, I think I've done a pretty good job leading my teammates. And, and can I follow up just and ask you a little bit about footwork, which I know isn't like the, the sexiest thing, but that was when I talked to Ryan this weekend and I talked to Quincy yesterday, they said like your, your footwork is more aligned with your body now. Can you explain how that helps you as you go through your progressions, be more accurate? Um, I'm not really sure what they meant by my footworking. My footwork I guess is in aligned sync with my would might be a better, like just um, if your footwork's in sync with your reads, it helps your accuracy. I mean, yeah, that, that just, that just comes with timing and, you know, uh, knowing when that route is most likely going to open up and make sh making sure you're on time. And I feel like, if every quarterback is on time to a certain read or a certain route, that's definitely going to make them more accurate in terms of uh, passing the ball. So I think you know, that just comes with timing and kind of knowing who's running the route and, you know, what route is, is being ran and, and, and it just kind of knowing your guys.